Welcome back, everyone. I just got back from Vegas a few days ago, and I'm sure most of you know that I played a pretty strong classical tournament in Vegas. But maybe what you didn't know is I also played a Blitz tournament. It was a Walter Brown Memorial Blitz part of the Vegas Chess Festival. And I actually filmed all my games in the tournament. And I want to share my very first game of that tournament in this video. And the game features a Stafford Gambit. And what I'm going to do is show the footage and then just talk about my thoughts as the footage plays. Now, I was playing a player who I didn't recognize and I didn't actually know her rating until after the game. Uh, her rating is about 2050 FIDE. It's probably good that I didn't know this because if I knew she was this high rated, maybe I would not have played the Stafford Gambit. But we will see uh, me delve into one of my favorite openings. I'll also say that I was maybe like the 10th or 11th seed in the tournament. Uh, there were a lot of strong grandmasters playing. Hans Niemann was a top seed. And then there was Ilya Nizhnik and Verugia Nikobian. But let's hop into this game. Okay, we shake hands and the game begins. So e4, e5, f3, and I am going for the Stafford. And we see my opponent play pretty quickly, which kind of gave me a sense of discomfort. But of course, I'm still in my prep, bishop c5. And with this moment of hesitation, I realize my opponent probably isn't so well prepared. Bishop e2 is one of the more common moves. And I was debating between queen d4 and h5, but I do play queen d4. Hitting f2, and after castling, now I play h5. Now I want to play knight g4 and set up a lot of attacking ideas. She plays d3, I play knight g4. And now, of course, I'm hitting f2. And there's really not too many ways for white to defend here. The best move, which I knew during the game, is bishop takes g4. But it is hard to concede the bishop pair. And there are some other moves as well. Of course, queen e1 is a main alternative. So I was feeling good. Up uh, more time than I started with. Almost up a minute. And she does play queen e1. So defending f2. Now the drawback of this move is black is able to keep initiative. And during the game, I was trying to remember what I've studied before, but I do play queen e5, hitting the pawn on h2, threatening maiden one. And now if white takes the knight, I take back, and then there's just a massive attack. So for this reason, she plays pawn to g3, and I pretty quickly play pawn to h4, so trying to get all the pieces involved, rook, knight, and queen. And after bishop f4, queen e7, there's still some pressure against white, uh, especially with this pawn tension. And I am having ideas. I was trying to calculate while my opponent was thinking. I was calculating ideas of taking king takes and takes. And I wasn't entirely sure what white is going to try here to defend. Because um, there's just so much pressure from so many different directions. Really, there's so many pieces that contribute to Black's attack. So she takes the knight. I take back. Do notice that we were playing with non-weighted pieces. So there, there were a few moves where it was easy to just knock pieces over. And when this happens, you have to adjust them before uh, completing your move. So bishop e3 was played. And now what's happening here is white doesn't have a light square bishop. And with this structure, light squares are very weak on the king side. So I was trying to figure out how to effectively take advantage of this. And there are perhaps a few candidate moves, but I decide for bishop f3, dreaming of teleporting my queen to g2. And I'm not too far away. I want to play queen e6 and queen h3. Now she takes the bishop, I take back. And I was actually calculating this line because it's a natural continuation for white to now play the move queen e3, but I very quickly play queen h5. And the queen is so well placed on h5, defending the bishop and creating the battery with now the queen and the rook. 
And with the pawn tension still remaining, there is no way for white to keep the h-file closed. And there's a big threat of taking and queen h2 checkmate. And we can see my opponent falling very low on time. And yeah, what to do for white, how to defend. And I was searching for defense, um, but didn't really see an effective one. After queen f4, I take. And after queen takes g3, rook h6. And yeah, white is in big, big trouble. The rook is coming to g6. And what to do? I was imagining rook g6, queen h3, and eventually getting the mate anyway, in addition to winning the queen. Time ticking down, white falling below 10 seconds, and yeah, white resigns. And it was a pretty smooth game. Of course, white had chances to be much better after the opening. And I do want to go back and just share basically what my opponent should have done not to allow this very dangerous attack. Now, bishop e2 is considered a slight mistake just because black can essentially equalize after knight takes e4. Um, now, I didn't go for that line because h5 just offers more attacking ideas. And actually, during the game, I, I was very much hoping for h3. And this walks into a really cool trap, knight g4. And if takes, takes, then black is winning because queen e5, queen h2 is a massive threat. So d3, queen e5, and there's no stopping checkmate. Like g3, it's made in one. And there's a really cool line. Instead of d3, let's say g3, I still play queen e5. King g2 looks to defend because now with queen h5, there's rook h1. But there's a pretty scintillating tactic here. Another piece sacrifice, bishop takes f2. And uh, white is just getting blown off the board. If rook takes f2, now queen h5, and there's no uh, no stopping queen h3, really, and there's no rook h1. Uh, so this would be winning. There's another funny line of takes, check, here, check, here, bishop e6. I've shown this before in many videos, but just goes to show the joy of the Stafford, what uh, the potential traps can lead to. So going back, what my opponent should have done in this position after knight g4 was take. And after takes bishop f4, uh, white's actually holding on. There'd be maybe some chance to get initiative, but the engine gives almost plus one in uh, white's favor. Um, but going back even further, I'll show what I was most scared of. And it's actually a simple line in this position. Uh, one of the reasons why the Stafford is not a great opening is because white has a move h3 here. And this really puts a hamper on black's attacking chances because there's no knight g4. And um, yeah, the engine I think will give like almost plus two. Yeah, over plus two for white. Of course, I would have tried to fight, but um, I would not have looked forward to, to playing this line. Uh, I usually play h5, but there's other moves. There's g5 with idea of g4. There's b5, b4 ideas. Um, sometimes queen d4 will come in these lines as well. So it could have been a much bigger challenge if my opponent knew the um, at least one of the refutations. But it was a fun game. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, let me know if you want to see more of my games from the Vegas Blitz tournament. I did play a few very strong grandmasters towards the end of the tournament. So stay tuned for more, and I'll see you guys soon.